What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to be organizing and pretty much just kind of getting my shit together. <laughs> so what you're looking at right now, right behind me is my filming background. You may recognize a little portion of it right over here. This part is typically what you see. This giant shelving unit is where I store all of my makeup. That's next to me and my little desk over here, which now you can see it's right in front of me. Normally you guys are really only able to see this part of my filming setup. Um, this section can sometimes get a little bit messy. One of the biggest chunks of organizing that we have to do for today's video is definitely going to be this bad boy over here. Can't see what I'm pointing at. This guy. This is where I organize my most used makeup. So I have this giant organizer on my filming desk that I use to keep all of my most used makeup as well as makeup products that I want to remind myself to use in videos. So makeup products that I kind of just have at the top of my priority list. I do like to switch out the products in here every once in a while to kind of keep everything fresh. And so we're gonna be switching out all the products or most of the products, just kind of refreshing it today as well. So let me just go through the current situation of my filming setup. So like I said, right over here, we have my filming desk. This is the giant product organizer, which, which we will be going through. This little trolley right over here, I bought with very good intentions. I thought that this would be the most amazing organizer for me to keep next to my um, filming setup to keep things in. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but this is serving zero purpose. <laughs> There's just like random products sitting up here. There's like empty tins. There's a monitor and that's it. So I kind of want to figure out a way to actually use this and make it useful in the space. So here's my actual desk space. This is actually very clean compared to what it usually looks like. It's really not messy at all. Um, we have all of my brushes, random makeup products scattered about. So first things first, let's actually give this desk a nice little wipe down, make it nice and sparkling clean. So I'm gonna start by taking everything out of here and separating it into two different categories. What I wanna keep in here and what I'm just gonna end up putting away. So here are my two piles. These are all the things I'm gonna be putting back in my makeup collection. These are all the things I wanna keep in this organizer. For all these products, the only reason why they're here is just because I feel like it's just time to switch them out. So for example, I have like shades that don't match me right now, like this Fenty Ease Drop in number four. I have my correct shade in this pile over here. I also have products that I just kind of use almost too much that I need to switch out to kind of freshen things up, like these MAC blushes, these Tower 20 blushes, and other products that I've put in here specifically to try and I've tried them and I don't actually love them And so I don't want to keep them in here like the Huda Beauty glowish uh, Foundation so now I'm just gonna put all of this stuff away and then we're gonna get started on putting some new things in here By the way, I just want to mention that this organizer is so old I've had this pretty much for as long as my channel has been around so for at least eight years It's from Cosmo cube. You may remember this brand from like Back in the day on YouTube, I feel like everybody was always talking about Cosmocube and that's why I have this because I bought it during the hype of it all. And it's a great little acrylic organizer. I mean, obviously I've had it for a very long time, so it's definitely held up the test of time and it works great for like a larger vanity collection. So I do organize my makeup in different categories within the drawers. There are one, two, three, four drawers. And then there is a top section, which you can see I haven't taken anything off yet. And I figured I would just do that all at the end. So starting off on the bottom, this is where I keep my powders, my foundations and my concealers. So keep in mind that this isn't just the makeup that I use on 
like day to day this is the makeup that i want to use when i'm filming as well so i really do need to have a, a, a variety of products different types of finishes different types of coverage etc so for the foundations i like to have definitely a variety starting from skin tints all the way up to very full coverage finishes depending on how i'm feeling that day so for my skin tints i have i think the basics you guys probably guess this mac face and body the makeup forever water tone the kosas uh tinted face oil as well as the fenty eavesdrop foundation it's shade number five is this overkill for skin tints yeah it is but it's fine for more full coverage foundations i have my clinique even better clinical serum foundation spf 25 as well as the dior forever skin uh 24 hour wear high perfection skin caring foundation these names are so long these are my two current favorite high coverage foundations they just last so well in the heat and let me tell you it gets so hot and sweaty in my office like right now i'm sweating profusely because i can't have my air conditioning going when i'm filming anything because it's so loud so i need to make sure that whatever makeup i have on my face is actually quite sweat proof because i just sweat so much whenever i film it's not the most pleasant thing in the world but it is what it is so these two foundations are definitely my favorites i'm actually wearing the dior forever on my skin now it's really beautiful both very dry skin friendly too so these are going to be my two high coverage foundations all my other foundations are sitting right over here by the way so if i ever wanted something else i could very easily grab it these are just the ones that i know i gravitate towards the most and i also don't have any new ones that i'm needing to try or wanting to try so i'm gonna leave it at that because already this is a lot of foundations to keep in here and i'm already going overboard so now moving on to concealers the ones that i've kept that were already in here are of course my elf hydrating camo concealer i love this guy it's very full coverage i also am keeping my dior forever skin correct concealer these two guys i always say are kind of like dupes for one another they are very similar in, the, in their finish their feel the way that they look for another full coverage concealer i'm also keeping my rare beauty one this is such a beautiful matte full coverage concealer that also works really really great if you are sweating because it really does stay put i'm also keeping my two nars soft matte complete concealers in here. I feel like this is one of my most go-to concealers. I always have to have this in my collection. These are very different than the other concealers that I typically keep in my collection because they are definitely way more on the matte side. I do really like these though, again, for hot sweaty days. I'm sorry, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's just the truth. And obviously I'm curating my current collection for the current climate um, and these just really stay put they don't slip around i like them most for around the face because they don't slip around and they do work really well for underneath the eyes too but they can be a little bit drying but they're still really great so i always like to have like at least two shades and i have shades uh, medium one custard because i am more on the tan side right now and light 2.5 creme brulee which is my most used shade as you can see. For more of a light coverage concealer, I have my Josie Moran Vibrancy in medium. So I am gonna add another concealing product to the mix. This is something that I'm dying to try out. It's actually not really a concealer, it is a corrector. It's the new Rating Creamy Color Corrector from NARS. This one is in the shade light. I'm not really the biggest user of color correctors, but I do like playing with them, trying them out because some of them are really nice. And so I'm dying to try this one out. So I'm going to be adding this guy to the little concealer set here you know what i changed my mind with the foundation i am actually going to add one more foundation to my collection and it's going to be the it cosmetics your skin but better foundation plus skincare i tried this in a somewhat recent video and i really really liked it i haven't tried it since though so i want to put it in here to kind of remind myself to to use it again because i did really really like this when i did use it i also am going to add one more concealer i lied <laughs> i have this bare minerals concealer here i love this stuff i feel like this is very underrated it's really just a very good medium coverage concealer um it's not too glowy it's not too matte just kind of lands right in the middle it's just a good basic concealer that I find works really well. So I'm gonna put this guy in here. Okay, um, let's actually do priming products because I realized that I don't really have any primers in my collection really at all because most of the time I do use only skincare to prep and prime my skin. So I'm gonna add two different priming products in here, one that I know I like and one that I wanna try. So the one that I know that I really like is the By Terry Brightening CC Serum. Um, this is the Radiance Elixir in Sunny Flash. This guy is really beautiful to add before applying foundation. It adds a really nice bronzy glow to the face. It also hydrates the skin and it just, 
looks really pretty underneath foundation. I haven't used it in a little bit, so I'm gonna pop that in there. And a product that I've been very, very curious about is the e.l.f. Putty Primer. I think I heard Alana talk about this and she was raving about it. If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm not mistaken, but that's what I remember. And so I definitely really wanna try this guy out. That's what it looks like for powder. Believe it or not, my cloud set from Kosas is not here. It's actually at my house, my vanity at home, so I don't have it here, which is very upsetting. And I feel like I need to bring it over. So I may do that. But for now, I'm going to keep the powders that I already had in here because there's not really any new powders that I'm like dying to try out that I wanna put in here. So I have a couple of my go-tos. My Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish is gonna be going in here, as well as my Pat McGrath under eye powder in medium. I love this guy. It's so finely milled. Looks like nothing on the skin. It's great. So that's it for all of my base products. Now let's move on to cheeks. So we need bronzer, highlighter, blush, and powder, cream, and liquid formulas. I need a nice variety in here. So starting off first with bronzer, which is probably one of my favorite categories, especially for this time of year. There are so many cream bronzers that I'm obsessed with right now. It's almost difficult to decide what I want to keep in here. The only bronzer though that I'm keeping in here in the cream format that I already had in here is the um, e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. This is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in the shade Tan Lines. I love this. It's so nice, it's so sheer. It's really great for like a more natural look. It's just really, really good. So this is definitely going to be staying in here. A new cream bronzer that I'm very excited to be including in this collection is probably a new favorite of mine, the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in Medium Bronze is so good you guys i cannot get enough of this stuff the color the way that it blends just everything about it is amazing if you're looking for a good easy to work with cream bronzer actually the elf one is really good but this one is also fan freaking fantastic highly recommend so i'm definitely gonna put this one in here the makeup by mario cream bronzers are also a huge must for me right now the shade medium is the one that i'm using i think i'm gonna leave it at that for cream bronzers i don't want to go overboard so now let's go on to powder bronzers so for something really nice and glowy i'm gonna put in my kosas bronzer this is the medium shade it's really really beautiful it has such a nice soft sheen um and it just looks so nice layered on top of a cream if you want to add a little bit of a glow it's beautiful i'm also going to put in some of my go-to matte bronzers so the vesca santorini or rather kiss by santorini soft matte bronzing powder is such an underrated product texture the way that it blends on the skin is like top notch it's Seriously, one of my favorites, so that's going in there. And also the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in number two is also one of my go-tos just because it is quite sheer and I do really like using this as kind of like a layering bronzer on top of my creams because it doesn't create too much of, of like a heavy look because this isn't a super heavy powder. So I feel like it works really well for that application um, specifically. Oh my God, you guys, you won't believe it. I found another one of my Kosas cloud sets. This is the one in feathery. I knew I had another one in here. Oh, thank God. Everything is good and well now. I'm gonna put this, <laughs> put this in the complexion drawer. Ooh. Back to bronzer. I am going to put another Makeup by Mario product in here. This is a soft sculpt bronzer in the shade medium. I actually haven't tried this guy yet and I really want to, so. And I think that's good for powder bronzers. Again, I don't want to overload it. So for blush, I have quite a few that I want to include in here. Three of them are actually new Pat McGrath blushes that I haven't yet tried that I'm dying to try out. So these are the Skin Fetish Divine Blushes. I have three shades here. Flirtatious, which looks like this. Honestly, not sure I'm gonna feel about that shade. It's kind of like a muted mauve color. Don't really know how these colors work on my skin tone, but I guess I'll find out at some point. Then we have Nymphette, which is a nice like soft rose color, also matte. And then the last color that I have here is Divine Rose. Honestly, all three of these look very, very similar to one another, but I still wanna try them all separately and see how I feel about them. I also almost always need to include some type of neutral blush in my like go-to collection because I just feel like it's the easiest blush to go to when I have more of like a colorful look going on or just a look in general that I feel is a little bit more difficult to match with a particular blush. She's So LA from Patrick Ta is one of my go-tos for a neutral blush. It's just so perfect. I also love the fact that you have both a cream and a powder in here. It's just such a good kind of like sculpting blush. I absolutely love this guy and highly, highly recommend it. 
I'm also going to be including this Bare Minerals bronzer. This is actually supposed to be like a blush and bronzer. So it's, it's essentially just supposed to kind of like warm up your cheeks and give your cheeks that really pretty bronzy blushy look, which is always the look that I want. So these products were seriously just feels like they were made for me. And I really, really like this one. This is Kiss of Copper. It does have a pretty intense sheen and adds a really nice glow to the skin. Um, and it also adds a lot of warmth. And then for cream blushes, I'm going to include two of the NARS Air Matte blushes. Uh, this one in Rush is probably my favorite from this collection. It's just such a beautiful sunburnt corally color. I love this one. And then this color Gasp is also really nice because it's a nice brownie neutral shade. So it's nice to have a neutral shade of both a powder and a cream. Actually, I guess I have two neutral creams because this has a cream too, but it's fine. They don't take up a lot of room. So for highlighter, I'm really just going to include one. And there's really only one highlighter right now that I'm reaching for so much so that I want to have it at arm's reach at all time. And it's the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow uh, highlighter in the shade Crystal Nebula. This is a gorgeous, glossy, glowy highlighter. It's very natural looking, but it still has a lot of pop to it, which is why I love it. Look how nice that is. It's so beautiful. I lied again. <laughs> I am actually going to include one more highlighter in here. And it's one that I actually mentioned, I think in my last video, the Armani Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer in the shade number 10 is so beautiful. Again, especially for this time of year when I am a little bit more tan, I've been loving this because it has this really beautiful kind of peachy bronzy undertone. So I find it complements my skin tone really nicely when I am a little bit more tan. The color in here isn't intense. It's not like super dark or anything, but it does give that very subtle peachy bronzy undertone that I think is so pretty. And I've been loving this as well. So I'll put it in there. Oh my God, I light again. <laughs> Highlighter. This guy from MAC is such an underrated product and it's one that I use so often and I always get asked what highlighter that I'm wearing whenever I wear this. It's the cream color base in the shade Pearl. It does give a very similar effect to the Lisa Eldridge one. It is obviously a different texture. This is a cream, that's a liquid, um, but it gives like just a really, really pretty kind of glossy effect to the skin. I love it. I wear it all the time, so yeah. Just put that right there. Okay, so now let's move to the next drawer, which is going to be eyeshadow palettes. This one is gonna be fun because I have a lot of fun eyeshadow palettes that I wanna include. Again, it's the summertime. I tend to gravitate towards more color in the summertime, especially on my eyes. I do love a good, bright, but simple eye. And there's a couple palettes that, I, that I've been playing with that I've been really enjoying for those types of looks. So that's what I'm gonna include in here. The one that I've been really enjoying is this guy from Beauty Bay. This is called Sunset Horizons. And look at these colors. How beautiful is this palette? You have like yellows and oranges and pinks and blues and purples. You basically have like a rainbow filled palette. It's really, really fun. For very, very neon shades, I've been really also liking another Beauty Bay palette. This is called Utopia. And these shades are very bright, very neon, and also work really, really great. So I'm gonna put that in there as well. When I play with bright colors, I always like to have a Natasha Denona palette nearby because her bright colors are just always, they always give you exactly what you want. Um, and sometimes bright colors won't give you exactly what you want and you need ones that are just like those good go-tos. And Natasha Denona always has those good go-tos for me. And the Circle Loco palette has been a palette that I've been using actually very often, more often than I ever would have thought. And I just love all of the shades in here, honestly. They're so freaking beautiful. So I'm definitely going to put this guy in here as well. I have three eyeshadow palettes here from Sydney Grace. These are the Sydney Grace X Temptalia palettes. I've used um, one of them already. Which one was it? Wasn't that one? It was this one, On the Horizon. I used these sage shades on my eyes and they were Stunning. Honestly, one of my favorite eyeshadow colors to wear is green, but I do find it difficult to find greens that are wearable that I would feel comfortable wearing for just like kind of going out, doing groceries, stuff like that. They just feel a little bit more neutral and just this entire palette's color story just feels very like grounded and very neutral, very easy to wear. And I just love the quality and the way that they applied. So I'm really excited to continue to play with these. And then I also have the two other palettes here as well, which I haven't yet played with, but they both look beautiful. This one called uh, 
Radiant Reflection has more jewel tones. And then this one called Quintessence is a little bit more cool toned. For my neutral palette, I pretty much always include the Natasha Denona Viva. This has been my go-to neutral palette pretty much since I started using this. It's just so good. It is the perfect neutral palette. It has everything that I want in here. All of the shades work beautifully. By far my most used neutral palette in my collection. So I feel like I always have to have it on hand. Now I have one more palette here. I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna put it in the collection because I haven't even looked at it yet, but it got me intrigued. This is actually a palette from La Roc. This is the Pro Palette Noir. I have not used basically anything from La Roc for years. Um, the last time I used a Lorac eyeshadow palette was like one of the pro palettes, especially when they were like super, super, super trendy. I don't know if you guys remember when they were like the hottest thing ever. I, I, that was probably the last time that I used one of those palettes. And so I want to check this one out and see if it's something that I can see myself using or want to try. Ooh, it's a lot of cool tones. Um, doesn't really excite me very much, actually. I don't really love the mattes in here. I do feel like they're a little bit muddy. The metallics look pretty though, but I don't know. I don't feel like it's worth putting in like the must have or must try collection. So I'm just gonna put it in my normal collection. As far as cream eyeshadow goes, I sometimes get in a little bit of like a cream eyeshadow red. I tend to use like the same things over and over again, like the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadows, MAC Paint Pots, etc. As far as the ones that I'm keeping that were already in here, I'm going to be keeping Kosas Globe. Need I say more, it's one of my favorite like golden glittery eyeshadows. I'm also going to be keeping uh, MAC Lay In Low in here. This is just a really good base to use. And then as far as what I'm adding to the collection, I have a bunch of these Laura Mercier caviar sticks, which I've been using for a long time, but I've recently kind of fallen back in love with them. I have a couple shades here that I've been loving lately. I have Rose Gold, Bed of Roses, and Strike Rose and then Metallic Taupe, which is the most amazing color. I used this in a video recently. I love using these as like quick eyeshadows all over the lid. They give such a nice, very beautiful metallic effect. They're so good. Now let's talk mascara. Um, I'm going to be keeping pretty much the same mascaras that I already had in here because these are all of my most used. We have MAC Magic Extensions, which is probably my most used right now. Um, the Benefit Roller Lash. M Cosmetics Pick Me Up, the L'Oreal Bambi Eye Mascara. This one is in dark brown, just a good natural mascara. Um, Lancome Lash Idol, and the e.l.f. Lash It Loud Volumized Mascara. These are all staying in here with me. For brow products, I'm just keeping all of my go-tos, and then I have one newer product here that I actually used for the first time today, and I really enjoyed it. So for pencils, I have my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, and then the Kosas Brow Pop. For like a normal gel, the Kosas Air Brow is really awesome. For like gels that fill in at the same time, the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Brow Fixer is like so freaking good, as well as the M Cosmetics Brow Cream in Brunette. These are fantastic. And then for a brow pen, I switched out my MAC brow pen for this guy from NYX. This is the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen in the shade Ash Brown. Matches me perfectly. Like I said, I used it for the first time today. I really liked it and I'm excited to continue to use it. And then I'm also going to include the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel because it's always good to have a clear one on hand as well. There is actually one mascara that I have here that I have not yet tried that I'm wanting to try and it is the Merit Perfect Black Lengthening Mascara. So I'm gonna put this in here as a reminder to do so. Also including my Say 101 mascara. This is really good. I really like this for the lower lashes because it's really, really small and spiky. So you can really get in there. Okay, now let's talk eyeliner. Now, obviously guys, keep in mind if I ever need anything specific, I just need to like go right over there and grab like a blue eyeliner or like a purple one or whatever I need at that very moment. But I like to keep my basics right next to me so that I don't always have to get up and down when I'm filming. It just is really inconvenient when that happens. So I like to keep a variety of basic things. So I actually just went through my collection and I just grabbed some eyeliners that I really, really like that I kind of forgot about. I wanted to bring back into my life. The Milk Makeup Longwear Gel Eyeliners are actually some of my favorite gel eyeliners. They are so good, so pigmented and so long wearing. I have three colors here that I'm going to be putting in here. Uh, I just want to show you guys how creamy this is. This hand is so swatched right now, but look at that. 
how easily that glided on and how pigmented it is it's pretty intense so this is obviously the black one which i'm going to be putting in there i'm also going to be putting in uh the brown one which is called ceo which is a really nice deep dark brown which i love and then a nude one as well which is called bcc then i'm also going to include another black eyeliner this is the pat mcgrath permagel ultra glide eye pencil in extreme black this is just another really really good pencil black eyeliner it's very black it's very long wearing it's just good stuff so i'm gonna pop that in there and then for liquid eyeliners i actually totally forgot how much i love the house laboratories liquid eyeliner um it's just really good easy to use very very black and very matte which i really like I just watched it right over here i'm also going to put this tiny little sample size of the benefit roller lash eyeliner which i like and a brown liquid eyeliner from M Cosmetics. This is the illustrative eyeliner in brown. So when it comes to lip products, what I like to keep in here are just the, the formulas and the textures and the colors that I tend to like to go to often, but obviously it depends on the whatever look I'm wearing. I'll often just go to my lip collection that's up there. So there are a couple things that I'm putting in here that are brand new that I haven't yet tried. The first thing is a new product that I just got in PR. This is from ColourPop and it's the Fresh Kiss glossy lip stain very intrigued by these very excited to try these out so i'm gonna put them in here i also have two lipsticks here from lisa eldridge that i have not yet tried that i want to get myself to to use we have dance card and kitten mischief what a cute name and i've got two glossy lip balmy type of lip products here from pat mcgrath we have divine rose 2 and flesh 7 so that's this guy, that's Flush 7, and then Divine Rose 2 is that guy. Let's put this on. Very pretty. The Charlotte Tilbury Happy Coral lipstick is absolutely beautiful. This formula is so gorgeous. It's so glossy and hydrating, and I love everything about it. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this guy in here. I also have my Fenty Gloss Balm. Um, my Maybelline Lifter Gloss. This is the gold one in crystal. It's really, really beautiful on top of nude, so I love keeping this near me. Um, this Dior Lip Maximizer Hyaluronic Lip Plumper is also beautiful. It's in the shade 016, and it's such a nice nude. I also have my uh, Buxom White Russian Gloss. Kaja Gloss in Honey Drizzled, beautiful pinky nude. This is more of like an intense liquid lip color for MAC. This is uh, Feel Me, question mark. It's really, really nice. And this is a matte lip color from NARS in Thrust. I also have a red one here from NARS that I love. This is Total Domination. It's such a good red, and it's been one of my go-to reds when I go for a red lately. And then I also love these um, M Cosmetics lip cushions and this one is in mystic it looks really really dark but it gives kind of like this just bitten look and then for lip liners i do have quite the variety here they're all kind of like the same same but different i'll just go through them really quickly we have kkw um 1.5 nyx suede matte lip liner in sandstorm huda beauty lip contour 2.0 kkw uh classic kim m cosmetics kitten Makeup Forever, Anywhere Caffeine, and Endless Cacao. So now let's deal with all the skincare stuff. So skincare is always a really important step in my makeup routine, so I always have to have good skincare near me um, so that I could prep my skin properly. So starting off first with serums and oils. For a very hydrating, milky serum, um, this one is beautiful from Joe's Moran. It's the Pure Argon Milk Intensive Hydrating Treatment really nice and milky you guys have probably seen see me use this a couple times it's really really nice and i really like this before makeup so i'm gonna put this in here for an actual oil i really like the biosance squalene vitamin c rose oil i like this because it's not super oily so it doesn't like make my makeup slip around for just like a really nice hydrating base i really like the vichy mineral 89 booster and i like using this before applying my moisturizer for my moisturizers this changes all the time i have a couple that i like to go to before applying my makeup if i want something a little bit more gel like i've been liking the summer fridays cloud dew oil free gel cream because it's obviously like a gel like consistency so it's not super heavy for something that is a little bit on the heavier side this is what i put on my skin today because it was feeling extra dry the joe's moran whipped argon oil face butter is beautiful it's so thick and creamy this in the winter time is fantastic 
fabulous. Something kind of like right in the middle, the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Lipid Peptide Cream is great. I use this in my normal skincare routine as well. Um, and it's one of my favorite moisturizers. For sprays, I have my four favorite sprays here. We have MAC Fix Plus, which I always have to have in my makeup collection, no matter what. The Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray is my favorite long-lasting setting spray, one of my favorites. To refresh and hydrate my skin, the Caudalie Beauty Elixir has been one of my favorites for years. And to hydrate my skin when it's feeling really, really dry, the Youth to the People Adaption Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist is amazing. For lip balm type products, um, most of these are from Laneige with no surprise. We have the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm and Gummy Bear, the Lip Sleeping Mask in Vanilla, and the Lip Treatment Mask. <laughs> oh, I love these. And then I also have been really, really loving the Kopari Lip Glossy Balm. And this one I think is in watermelon, if I'm not mistaken. It's just a good tinted lip balm. So that is it. That is the refreshed makeup organizer. Yes, I know that the organizer is like halfway off the table. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere. I have to do it like this, otherwise you see it in the shot when I'm filming. So it just has to kind of live on the edge, literally. Okay, let's discuss this thing. The only thing that makes sense to put here is filming equipment like tripods and batteries and all that stuff because right now I don't really have a great place for all that stuff. So I think it makes sense to have that right next to my filming setup. So let's, let's make it that. <laughs> This actually makes so much more sense and I'll probably even continue to organize it and add some more things to this little trolley now that I have an actual purpose for it. I also have my color card. This is what I use to color balance my videos. I always misplace this, so this is another perfect spot to put this. So here is my newly organized studio space. It looks so much better, so much more inviting. And then as far as my background goes, I always like to switch things up a little bit and I think I wanna just kind of switch up the decor. Right now I have uh, these two prints over here which I've had basically since the beginning, since moving into this space. I recently just added these little cuties over here. These are some of the prints from Jamie Page Doodle. So these are things that I've drawn and printed and they're available in my shop. So I wanted to, of course, display them here and I think they look really cute. So I don't really wanna change these prints because I do like the way that they're looking right now. I think sometime soon though, I am gonna switch things up, but I do feel like kind of changing up what's on this back desk over here. So let's do that. Okay, I ended up taking away my little prints on the side just because I felt like it was looking a little bit too busy. These are so crooked, oh my God. I always find, I'm like, is my video crooked or is it just my prints? And I think it's just my prints, they're so crooked, okay. All right guys, it is so hot in here. I am so ready for my air conditioning back on. <laughs> which means it is time to wrap up the video. I am definitely getting to the point where I'm going to have to start to rethink my makeup organization. I need, I need more, I need more organizers is what I'm trying to say. So perhaps sometime soon I will do a complete makeup reorganization video as well. Stay tuned for that potentially. But for now, hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one.